Good morning to my favorite readers on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about that big word, literary merit. We all ask yeah, why has this book won a good award? And then your, your best friend, your favorite book friend, when slams this huge word onto the table, literary merit. And to answer your question on what literary merit is, we're gonna go straight to Wikipedia. Wikipedia defines literary merit as something that is high quality of writing attributed to works of literature, including drama, prose, and poetry. Critics point to literary merit as necessary subjective since aesthetic value is often determined by personal taste and has been derided as a relic of scholarly elite. I don't know what the hell that means. It means a body of smart people just sat down and said this book actually means something more than just a book. I guess literary merit is just a fancy way of just saying that this book actually means something versus this book is just for shits and giggles, I guess. How can a book like this get lit called literary merit and win all these type of awards while a book like this sells out, sells the shit out of it? And I guess literary merit comes into play when we judge novels such as this one. Teardrop by Lauren Kate, and you compare it to this novel that you probably haven't even heard of, Big Breasts and Wide Hips by Mo Yan, the latter of which is actually written by a Nobel Prize winner author. Literary Marriage just goes into saying that smart people sat down and said that this book actually means something as us as human beings and actually shows a different culture or a different part of humanity that we just normally didn't really see in a normal book that's just made just for selling. This one is probably written more just for shits and giggles while while this one is written to show the gender discrimination that takes place in China. It's actually really good. I guess the question I'm trying to ask here now is how can a novel like this one, The Fire by James Patterson, outperform a novel such as Breast and Wide Hips by Mo Yan? How can this one be a best-selling novel and this one just for the literary snubs? Club. I guess that comes down to the fact that us as human beings, we want to escape from our everyday lives and escape and explore into an imaginative world that's dreamlike and away from the, never, the everyday problems that we face as human beings. And it's probably why people, and it's probably why people tend to not read books like this, and and try to read books like this that makes us feel happy and not have to worry about the problems every day that we face in everyday society. It doesn't take away that these books don't actually mean anything. It's just that these books are just scarier as they're more towards reality. Does that mean someone should be reading books like this that actually have literary merit over books like this which don't? But that also comes into play that should we actually be reading books like this that actually have literary merit or should we actually be escaping into fantasy life? Damn, fantasy, what the fuck is that? <laughs> should we be reading books like this that actually have literary merit, or should we be reading books like this, which allows us to escape into someone else's life, not to live through the horrors that are in this one? You know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Subscribe for more book reviews, talks, and chasing at Stella. Thanks for watching. Keep your heads up high and expectations great. All right, so you guys are wondering if you guys should be reading Looking for Alaska by John Green. And first and foremost, if you've not read Looking for Alaska by John Green, you should probably be reading it right now instead of watching this video. 